Okay, so now we're up here. We're only at about 3,500 feet, which, you know, where I come from, you know, if you're in Mexico, that's not too high, okay? You want to get pretty high, which you can't do here because they don't, they didn't legalize pot yet. It's just, it's the fucking old people, man. You got to get a lot of those geriatrics, get them to eat pot food. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to form a society. I don't even use that much pot, but I th I'm definitely going to form a society called the Society for Getting Geriatrics to Eat Pot. Okay, anyway, that aside, we're 3,500 feet. It's chilly as hell because we're so high latitude, okay? So remember, you go low latitude, you can get really high and not be that cold. You could be up at 8,000 feet. It's not freezing yet, but here, you know, we're only at 3,500. Anyway, the point is it's fucking cold, okay? And a good thing about what we're doing now is this is kind of like Tony's time machine. I guarantee you, if you could go back to the Oligocene, maybe Miocene, maybe a little bit later, this is what Antarctica looked like, okay? Plant communities like this with many related, uh, you know, genera and families, many of the same genera and families as you see down here, okay? Did they have an astelia, a wonderful monocot? They call it pineapple grass or some shit, no relation to pineapples, but did they have an astelia? Did they have that in Antarctica? 15 million years ago, I bet they did. Remember, Antarctica used to be forced. They got a lot of interesting stuff right here. Richia, we got the Richia again. Richia scoparia. I believe this is scoparia. It sure looks like it. Blueberry family, Apacrid subfamily. Okay. Ericaceae, but Apacridoidae. Again, looks like a goddamn monocot. Very spiky leaves. The inflorescences are done. They're bright red when they're going off. The snow uh, lizards, what is it? The snow uh, skinks they got up here. I don't know how to fuck you be a lizard on a, you know, when it's so chilly like this. I mean, here, this is this is the Southern Hemisphere equivalent of summer. It's December, December, early December is equivalent to being early June. Okay, but they're still, you know, it, it's still freezing up here. The skinks somehow are able to do, look at all the wombat shit. Hey, they're just shitting everywhere. I feel like I'm in San Francisco. There's shit all over the place. Anyway, I'd rather slip in wombat shit than human shit, though. Big difference. Uh, anyways, you can see that Richia. Okay, these inflorescences, again, red when they're going off. You know, assisted pollination by skinks. The lizards go, remove the corollas, expose the stamens, that insects come and get them. All right, a lot of interesting stuff going on, going off here. This juniper-looking shit, all right? This is a species of paper daisy in Asteraceae, all right? Azothamnus is the genus here. Look at it. Look at these things. Then we got a true conifer right over here. This is a rare bastard. Anyway, here we go, Ferrosphera hookeriana, Okay. Dedicated to all the hookers in the world, like I can, uh, consider myself one of them. All right, this is a great way to recognize their efforts and the work they do. Actually, I think it was that named after some dead white guy named Hooker. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, this plant is now only known from these alpine areas up here, uh, you know, above 3,000 feet. All right, high latitude, high elevation areas. Okay. Podocarpaceae, right? Not big right here. Look at Orestio. You got members of Restionaceae, very, very common family in South Africa. Again, we got that Southern Hemisphere thing going on in Gondwan and distribution. Nice. Look at a beautiful red on the uh, the new foliage of this uh, species of Restio. Oh, look at this other Restio. Tiny, tiny graminoid, tiny, tiny grass-like member of a dioecious plant family of monocots. So big in the southern hemisphere, it's where they hit it big. Got wombat shit everywhere. And look at this. This is it's this is a species of raspberry. Okay, rosaceae. A few million years diverged from the uh, rest of the genus. Species, uh, it's a species of rubus. Look at that, an alpine raspberry. Look at that. Apocarpus. See that? Look at that floral structure. See, they get the stigmas in the center and then the anthers. Uh, you know, circumscribing uh, all those uh, apocarpus ovaries. Ooh, I'm gonna leave too. Glabrous, lobed and dissected. And who do we got here? God damn! Don't judge me for my my. You know, I have been using lotion. Porosidal anthers. Do you like porosidal anthers? See that? Purple anthers with the little pores at the end of them. God damn it. Who is it? So look at this. Look at this whole plant community. Nothing very tall. You got those eukes over there. Got to be very cold tolerant eucalyptus. But nothing very tall. You got your orites right there. Proteaceae. All right, Glycenia alpina. This fern down here. Now this is a dominant little bastard. You can see this guy everywhere, okay? From the forked fern family. 
uh, which I've uh, seen, uh, it's generally a tropical family, but here it is growing in a very cold place at relatively high altitude and high latitude. Look at those, those leaves, looking all beady and what the shit. And of course the foliage forks, okay? Just equal, uh, equal uh, branching. And then there's that new growth on it too. See, orange fuzz, all right, unfurling. And look at this, it's, just, it's the dominant plant here by far. Of course, you got your Astelia alpina, Leptospermum over there, Myrtaceae. This member, Ericaceae right here, that white flowered little bastard, look at that. Epacris serpillifolia, namesake genus of the subfamily, Epacridoidae. Look at that, five petals, it's used to get her. What those anthers look like if you could dissect them, huh? Evergreen, plasticky foliage, red calyx. Little heath plant, loving the acid soils. Now this plant, this, in fact this whole genus is a fucking bang. You could just see those pink flowers just starting to emerge. Still a little early for it. This is in the genus Baronia. And this is Baronia citriodora. And the foliage, like many members of the citrus family, Rutaceae smells incredible. Just just pellucid oil glands throughout the vasculature. All right, making it smell very pleasant. You can see those flowers just coming. Just coming into a bloom. Probably another couple weeks. Maybe another week. Anyway, four petals when they go off. Baronia is a very species-rich genus in much of Australia, okay? There got to be a hundred species at least. I saw plenty in Western Australia. Crush that foliage up and it smells incredible. Ah. Oh. So so good. I wonder, if, I wonder if there's like any new age Etsy boutiques marketing this, you know? Market this to your ass. Clean your bathroom as a bathroom. I mean, not this species, a more common species, but you know what I mean. All right. Look at these little uh, monocot looking rosettes, all this red stuff. Growing aquatic. It looks like a damn Isoedes or something, but, uh, you know, I can't find any flowering structures. All right. Isoedes is a fern, really weird aquatic fern. Anyway, all right, eucalyptus subcranulata over there. All right, one of the uh, alpine gums, yellow gum, they call it. Look at that beautiful bark, too. God damn. Growing all contorted and what this shit. See, there's the juvenile foliage on a, that subcranulata. See? More ovate. Look at the, look at the new, uh, new, veg, new veg, too. Look at that. Flush and red. Protective pigments. Of course, there's the larger uh, adults over there. Another species of Proteaceae, this is Hachia epiglottis. All right, this is a, found throughout Tasmania for, at all elevations, okay? A variety of elevations. There's those, uh, those little yellow things that are flowers. Look, the leaves, those, the plasticky foliage, those leaves end in a, a tapered point. And uh, of course, they got, like most Hachias, they got that woody fruit. See that? That just stays on her. It's a persistent fruit. What does it take to get it to open? So you got to burn. Can't imagine they're getting too much fire here. Let's get you a nice money shot of the flowers. All right. Again, four tepals and a pollen presenter. That curved thing in the center is the pollen presenter. Oh, see, there's a the pollen presenter with the uh, tepals already fell off. And, of course, the anthers are on the distal ends of those tepals. You can kind of see them. They're like those little white tufts. Lots of hachias. Lots of species of hachia, especially in the Australian mainland. Look at all that ferrosphera. Look, that's all that podocarp. You think the, you think ferrosphera used to be on Antarctica back in the day? Probably. They probably had a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of different podocarps. Think about it. It drives me nuts. Think about all the extinct forms we will never know. All right. What? God, I would have loved you. If you could, you know, people ask me if you go back in time. All right. I always say, you know, Jurassic or something. I would love to just go to, the, to Antarctica during the Eocene. See the flowering plant diversity. I mean, this obviously isn't a flowering plant, but you get, you catch my drift. Flowering plant diversity and conifer diversity on Antarctica 50 million years ago. God damn. You got that Leptospermum linigerum up there, that conifer looking member of the guava family, Myrtaceae, with the woody capsules. And look at that, just that, that podocarp freaking everywhere, man. Haven't seen any female cones yet, though. Look, just drooping. Look, just a cascade of microstroboli. 
and not flowering now, but this is another plant notable for a, well, it's a somewhat basal placement in Proteaceae, so it's an early branching lineage in Proteaceae, or so I hear, okay? Bellandina Montana, and surely this guy was hanging out in Antarctica back in the day. All right, what were you guys doing? What were you doing back there? Look at a beautiful red color on it. Emerging inflorescence. They got kind of like a phyllocladus looking leaf almost. Look at it splits. Almost trifid. Splits into three lobes. And there's the old inflorescences. There's last year's inflorescences. There's this year's. We're still kind of early. Again, this is like June up at the high elevations, you know, in the Rockies or something. It's the, the Rockies aren't really going off to like August, right? You know when they're blooming? Yeah, it doesn't get that tall. But uh, just doing its thing. Common at the right elevations, Bellandita. Look at these, look at these ukes. Look at that beautiful bark on those things, man. God damn it. Look at this. The whole understory is dominated by Glycinia alpina and Edestelia alpina. Caprosma, Caprosma nitida, nitida, Rubiaceae coffee family. Exceptionally species rich genus, you know, I think there's like a hundred species in this genus, maybe more a fucking lot There's a lot. Okay, you could put that in there But they, they actually put that in the uh, description of the genus in a Tasmanian flora. It says a fucking lot Okay, how many species a fucking lot? That's what it said. Anyway, Caprosma All right, where did I see that? Did I see a Caprosma in South Africa, too? I forget. I think I did. It blew my mind when I saw it Look at it. Look at these eukes. So you get eucalyptus coxifera up here and uh, Eucalyptus subcranulata. I believe this is Coxifera. You know, they kind of confuse the shit out of me. I, <laughs> I think that's I think that's the yellow gum. I think that's subcranulata. I think this is Coxifera. I think Coxifera is a little bit bigger. Twisted, contorted. Look at a damn. Look at a bark. Oh God. And even up at these elevations, all right, they're cold tolerant. But even up here, it gets so cold that sometimes these ukes die from cold. It is little, look at this, the soil so wet. And then of course, how could I forget this guy, Tasmania, namesake of the island. Tasmania lanceolata, from Winteraceae, another basal angiosperm family, one of the more basal angiosperm families. Canalales is the order there. All right, peppermint, crush those leaves, they get kind of like a peppermint. Maybe not peppermint. Maybe they're kind of spicy. They got some pungent volatiles in there. That's all you need to know. Look at that. Beautiful red stems. Tiny flowers. Okay. Very distinct uh, anther morphology there. Look at that. Where's the ovary? Or are they dioecious? I haven't seen this bigger than a... Uh, I haven't seen it taller than yay high. But maybe the... You know, for some reason I think it gets a lot bigger than that. Trying to figure out where the where the uh, female cones were on this ferrosfera, and I think that's them. See those little red bits at the end of those uh, that decussate foliage? That is insane. That is so tiny, so tiny. That's barely what? Barely a millimeter. Yeah, barely. That's like a it, bigger than a millimeter. It's like a millimeter diameter. If that is indeed what they are, those are the megastroboli. They don't look like microstroboli. Jesus Christ. I assume it's a dioecious plant. Look at it. How does shit? How does it do it? How does it do it? How does it do it? Jesus Christ, look at that. Yeah, I guess plants are dioecious. So you can see those two on the right. Those are the uh, megastroblite of female cones. And on the left, with the, only slightly different, you can see the scales coming apart that, that would disperse the windborne pond. Those are the microstroblite of male cones. Jesus Christ, such subtle nuance. What a weird plant, man. Go back to the Jurassic. Anybody ever tell you that before? Go back to the Jurassic. I, I'll do it. I'll go with you. Look at that. See, it looks like a juniper. It's an asteraceae. It's a sunflower. Azothan, this hooker eye. What's up, hooker? How you doing? You know, I, I, how, does it, how does it do that? <laughs> Again, just, uh, you know, just convergent evolution, right? Shrink those leaves, bring them in close, right? As a juniper would do to withstand the cold temperatures. Don't really got to worry about aridity up here, but still. Look at this, a dominant plant, too. It's, uh, it's either that hakea or orites. 
hard to tell unless you get up close. And then Azothanus, Neclycinia alpina everywhere. That Epacris, to it, a little white flower bastard, Ericaceae. Oh, there you go. Look at those fruits. Okay, they're open. It's not a little woody knob. Orites acicularis. All right, almost converge with the hickey though. Yeah, again, those plastic, plastic feeling foliage ending in a tapered point. All right, but look at the bark on this bastard. Look at that. Oh, this fuck. Look, you got a goddamn little lump of moss growing on this bark. With they look, ribbony bark with the lichens. Holy shit. How many species of lichen? How many species of lichen you got on there? God damn. Doesn't this make you want to go back to Antarctica during the Eocene? Okay. Maybe it was a little warmer during the Eocene. Oh, shit. I see a cool conifer over there. I think I know what that is. I think that's the other species of Atherotaxis growing in that Eucoxiferous forest. They're looking like a bunch of porcupine quills. It's a species of Restio. Ah, oh, they're so cool. Some people go nuts about these in horticulture in the Northern Hemisphere, which I, I get it, you know? I get it. If you're going to do a non-native, I don't think... Are there any invasive Restio and AC? I don't think so. Pretty pretty cool for a grass. Center of diversity is South Africa. You get some wild ones here, but you get some here too. You get some also in South America. So a relatively old family, okay? I bet you there would... I guarantee you there was Restio and AC on Antarctica back in the day. Is that a, a Bratinella again? These cushion bastards, Asteraceae. Is it a bra? I can't tell. So many, there's so so much convergence. So many plants up here take on a cushion habit. I'm gonna cross this little uh, tannic rich uh, stream. Okay, Ferrosphera all over here. All right, Astelia alpina. You can you, know, you can do it. It's not too hard to do a species, a plant community species list. Oh, blue sky. First time I've seen that all day. Damn, look at I can't get a look at the color palette on that uke. Ah. Chili. I'm wearing like three layers now. You know, you could wear a dago tea in this weather. Where I live, you can't wear a dago tea. Now, some of you may not know what a dago tea is. Colloquially, people call them wife beaters, but I don't like the imagery of that name. Okay, not really into the whole, you know, violence against women. It's kind of, it's kind of a drag, kind of a bummer. I don't want to think of that. All right, and it's uh, inappropriate. It's kind of a stereotype. I prefer the word dago tea. Okay, look at this, yo. God damn, is this just the juvenile foliage of a uh, subcranulata? Okay, I prefer dago tea, okay? As in, you know, uh, a, sh a shirt that's uh, frequently worn by Italian-Americans, by dagos. Okay? I will call it that. But you can't wear a dago tea where I live because it's just too hot. Look at that baronia. Look at it. Big baronia right there. Big shrub. Still not in bloom, but it sure does smell nice. Oh, yeah, you like rutaceae? Pellucidoilglands.com. There's a leptospermum lenidrum again. Oh, this damn mucky muck everywhere. You think the thylacines were hanging out here back in the day? I bet they were. You know, someone's got to do a drawing of a thylacine eating a taco. Why did he knock them out, too? Because they could for because they were eating sheep? Fucking stupid. I'm basing economy around sheep. Now I just pissed off half of Australia. It's kind of a stupid thing to base an economy around, though, huh? You know? How much wool do you need? You gonna eat you gonna eat those guys too? What do you end up on a kebab or something? Okay, we're close to the Anthro Texas. Let's go check it out. Okay, wait, wait. We gotta, we gotta talk about this guy, Bauer rubioides, Cunoniaceae. Okay, another common Southern Hemisphere plant family. Order of Oxalis, Order Oxaladales. Many stamens in there, and a Bifid stigma. So it was actually just two styles, two styles. But you get what I'm saying. Probably a bicarpellate ovary down there. Look at the sepals too. Do the whole evergreen foliage thing? How about that? Right, let's go check out these fucking uh, redwood relatives. Look at that. I like that. They call them pencil pines. No relation to pines. Everything's a pine here. Celery pine, pencil pine. Australia really nailed it with how common names can fuck you up. You know? Terrible. Terrible. Don't call them a pine. There's no pines in the southern hemisphere. There's no native pines in the southern hemisphere. The ones that are here are extremely invasive. Oh, what's this? Another, uh, is this another Orites? It's Proteaceae for sure. Look at that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at how those, those uh, margins of the leaves curl over like that. We're hinting at the yellow indumentum beneath. Yeah, another Richia, Ericaceae, with that mean spiky foliage. Look, I just pulled the Corolla off right there. The Corolla, aka the Calyptra, aka the Operculum, 
and revealed all those nasty stamens below, those nasty, filthy stamens. It's, it's so bizarre to me that you would have flowers where the corolla needs to be pulled off in order for reproduction to occur, in order for the pollen to be, you know, gathered. That's so weird. A corolla with no opening. Look at that. Who pulls them off? Look at that. Look at the what the shit. But that's richier for you, huh? How about that? It must, I mean, there must be an adaptive benefit to it, otherwise it wouldn't stick around. Who pulls these off in real life? Did the birds do that? Oh, there's a little spider. Oops, sorry, guy. Look at that. Oh, let it all hang out. Don't you feel free, huh? Now you're free balling. Look at that. Just a nice little, nice little spiky bush. Sphagnum bag. Sphagnumbag.com. Is it still alive? Is it just producing very rich uh, carotenoid pigments to protect against the sun? Nice sphagnum. Touch my sphagnum. Oh, we got a lycophyte in there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Almost looking like the Atherotaxis. Look at that. We got to get over there. See, I came through there, but there's too much brushy stuff. I had to go around. Got all three species here. Look at this. This is like a floating bag. Reminds me of like some. Look at that. It's like something you'd see up in a, you know, some glacial, uh, post glacial area of Michigan or something. Look at this. Sphagnum everywhere. Atherotaxis selaginoides, Richia, Pandanifolia, and then you got a different species of Atherotaxis over there, Cuprosoides. We'll get to that later. Look at these things. I understand, you know, seeing them here, I understand why they didn't do too well in San Francisco. They need damn near persistent water and it's pretty chilly. So, there's just a whole assemblage of uh, scat around. Richia, eucalyptus, sphagnum, astelia, leptospermum, myrtaceae, orites. God damn, look at that. Gondwanan plant community. We got Apacris over here, another Apacris, Ericaceae, with those beautiful red fruits. And then there's those tiny white flowers. No, you know what? This is Cyathodes, excuse me. But I got the family right, at least. I fucked the genus up, though. Cyathodes. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the hybrid between the other two species of Atherotaxis. This is Atherotaxis laxifolia. Beautiful decussate scales. Do we got any cones on here? Huh? Wouldn't you love to be a Gondwanan redwood? Southern Hemisphere redwood? Fucking bangers, man. You associate with the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi? Probably not ectomycorrhizal. I don't think many members of Cupressaceae associate with ectomycorrhizal fungi. I think it's all AM. Look at coming out. How old is this guy? God damn. Look at the Richies. Look at the Richies. Eh, not bad for a blueberry. Not the Fagus. Cunning Hamii. We gotta find the other species of Atherotax. Look at that, Richie! Holy shit, that's a fucking blueberry. God damn! Makes it. I I can't help but think about all the forms that went extinct. Okay, how long ago was Richie growing on the Antarctic continent? How many millions of years? Look at this! Look at this damn Richie! Richie pandanifolia. Look at it, keeping the old, making a little skirt with those old, uh, those old leaves, insulating the stem of this monocolous bastard, this monocolous unbranching bastard. But there's more of them. God damn. More of that, uh, I guess this is a Richia too. It's a Richia too. Look at that. The same family, not just the same family, but the same genus. Actually, I think they moved these to Dracophyllum, but you get the point. Stepping over boulders of diabase. Look at the red moss and lichens and shit. Look at this. Look at it. Little dame, little little fairy nook over there. Oh, look at that. Look at the nothophagus. Oh, that's a uke. Sorry. This is all nothophagus, though. What the shit? So much damn like it. Come through here. Oh, I just got a load of Podocarpus jizz. Ferrosfera jizz in my face. Oh, God. These are all males, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't see those that kind of drooping. The females have that kind of drooping 
form to them. Anyway, here's the last species of Athrotaxis. We didn't see this one yet. Cuprosoides. If they call it a pencil pine. Because it's a pine. I don't know why it's a pencil. Because you make pencils out of them. It's kind of stupid. Anyway, Athrotaxis cuprosoides. Oh, look at the microstroboli on that one. Look at that microstroboli and uh, megastroboli. Look at that. Just a little... You love to find a fossil. How old is the oldest Athrotaxis fossil? And have they been found anywhere else except uh, Tasmania? Probably. You probably had this on Australia back in the day before it dried out, you know, before the continental drying thing happened. Here it is just growing virtually right in the damn water with the sphagnum and with the shit and the astelia and the apacris and ferrosfera blowing jizz in my face. Oh, look at the ukes up there too. Look at that beautiful uh, boulder pile of diabase. And then there's after Texas Selaginoides, and then the hybrid is right there, Laxifolia. What a banger! Hey, pleased to meet you. I've been looking at you for a long time, you know. It's nice to finally see you. You hear that? That's a frog. This shit. It's a funky ass frog, man. I'm sorry, there's a, there's a better money shot of those female cones, those mega stroboli. See that this one didn't fully uh, dry out. It's still, I guess, it's still connected to vasculature to plant, maybe. Large scales. You can see the, you can see the scales when they're fully juiced. Yeah, it wasn't enough just to see. I actually had to get inside it. All right, check out that bark. Beautiful red bark. Beautiful red shaggy bark. Look at it. God damn, I, I love this genus, man. I just love thinking what those forests must have been like. Were there any, were there ever any large members of this genus, all right? Want to look up another cool conifer? Look up Fitzroy cuprosoides, the Alerce trees down there in Chile, all right? Same family, same relic distribution, all right? Growing down at the tip of Patagonia, all right? They, they like a lot of moisture and they like it relatively cool. What the fuck is a damn tiger snake doing in the middle on a goddamn path. What are you doing? Fuck this. God damn it. Look, he's just hanging out. How do you, man? It's fucking cold. Oh shit. Oh shit. Hey, sorry. We didn't mean it. We didn't mean it. God damn. Just went in his little hole down there, man. He, deadly venomous. Deadly. All right, I don't think anyone dies anymore, but you know, you got to get medical attention. I think you got a couple hours to live. Cobra family, Elapidae. I didn't mean to curse so much for any of you sensitive listeners. I just, you know, those things, you, you, you figure it's chill. It's chilly up here. I'm wearing three layers. I got the Dago T beneath, Dago T t-shirt, hoodie, four layers. And then I got a jacket on top. You don't think it's chill. And then he's just hanging out like it's no one's business. You right? I thought you guys were supposed to be uh, cold and tolerant. Huh? Okay, anyway, this is what I wanted to see before that tiger snake kind of spooked me a little bit. <laughs> Normally, I love snakes, but when you, you know, the threat of death is so close as it is with so many of the Australian snakes, as many of you surely know. Anyway, here's a beautiful specimen out of Athro, Texas, uh, Cuprosoides. Look at it. Oh, god damn. Just look, looking just like a redwood. Look at this, we got we got two different species forming this little mat. Okay, this little cushion. Alright. This one's a brodonella right here, the, the brighter green one. The more mint green one is in the Nephali. But they're both asteraceae. So a brodonella and then uh this little paper daisy bastard. See there's the uh, old uh phyleries right there. Oh and see there's a flower right next to it. Looks like it's spent though. Nephali, the paper daisy tribe, has such tiny goddamn flowers. Look at that, just little ros rosettes, okay? It's like if you took a bunch of leaves spaced out vertically on a stem and got rid of all the stem and just, just you know, reduced and shortened all those leaves together, you'd have this little rosette. And that's what's going on. The adaptive benefit in forming a cushion, a mat, in a place where it's uh, generally so cold. It's so cold, but there's still somehow goddamn cobras, you know, walking around like it's nobody's business, all right, in their birthday suits, I don't, I was, that, you know, I'm, I love the snakes, but I just, it was a little startling. You know, I, I figured it was a little chilly up here for them. So here we go, another uh, member of the blueberry family, that species of Richia again. All right, forming a little bush with those fused corollas, those opercula, okay, an opercula, just a few, all those petals fused into a little tube. You got to pull them off, and when you do, 
There's a little bit of nectar at the base of it. You can't really see right there. But delicious nectar. It's actually very sweet. You know? Oh, yeah. But remember, the plant's not trying to just give away too much nectar. It puts a little bit. All right? So, you know, either birds or skinks or whatever got to come by, pull those off, and then expose those, uh, all those uh, stamens. All right? God, the apacrids are so weird. They're so weird, man. Look at that. Just forming a nice little bush right here. Look at that. Here's a massive old bastard of Atherotaxis cuprosoides. Got to be a thousand years old, at least. Oh, look at that. Who's that over there? What's it doing over there? You got a little wallaby over there. What's he doing over there? Look, you, be, you got fleas or something? This looks like a fancier kangaroo. You know, what do they, what do they think about this? What do you think about after Texas? What do you think about Gondwan and relics? God, just a giant redwood with his feet in the water. We go one of the two eucalypt species up here. This is eucalyptus coccifera, the other is subcranulata. Coccifera has the narrower, more lanceolate leaves. And uh, there's those fruits. Look like a little button. Okay. Of course, the uh, petals form the operculum, which is a little cap that falls off and the stamens come out. And that's just the ovary. The stamens are gone. Everything fell off. It's just a little uh, maturing ovary right there. Eucalyptus coccifera. Look at that bark, too. Look at that, look at that beautiful gray bark. I said, yeah, there's a nice there's a nice side-by-side. -side. Coccifera subcranulata, the yellow gum. You can see what I call it, the yellow gum. It's got yellow bark. And uh, you look at the, uh, there's a nice, there's a nice uh, money shot comparison the foliage. There's coccifera, longer, more lanceolate, and there's uh, subcranulata. Kind of looking like an arctostaphylus, like a manzanita. Kind of looking like arctostaphylus patula. See that? More rotund leaves. Of course, big differences in the bark, too. Look at that. God damn, the anthrotaxis here. It's fucking wild. Oh. God damn, look at that banger of a hachia. Hachia alert. So many cool proteaceae. So many cool proteids. Hachia epiglottis. Look at that. Oh, it smells. The flowers are so fragrant, too. Look, you got a little, uh... What's that green stuff? That's the... I mean, I guess that's the ovary down there, huh? But you got... Do you have a little, uh... A little nectar coming out? See, uh, you can very clearly see... Look at the yellow at the, the ends of those, uh... Teeples. The anthers are adnate to the distal ends of the teeples. And then there is the pollen presenter. We, look how it, it widens like a little hourglass at the, the distal end. Of course, the foliage looks like little spiny, little spiny shits. How about that? You like that? Put that in the floor. Little spiny shits. A written description of the species. New veg coming out. Look at that. It's so soft. Gives no hint. Oh, you got you still got that accumulate point. And it gives no hint to how stiff and rigid these uh, these leaves get at the end. Closest relative to this, what we have in the northern hemisphere, is sycamores. Isn't it fucking weird? Platinus, the genus Platinus and sycamores, are in uh, Proteales, the order. Both very old lineages. Okay, now we're up at about 4,200 feet, you know, the alpine zone, the true alpine zone. We're just seeing everything highly reduced. Okay, that wind just comes up over these uh, these slopes and just blasts everything. You get everything Krumholtz. Well, I guess it's kind of Krumholtz. Look at the after Texas over there. Look at that. It's the tallest they get. It looks like 10 feet. Look at that, way off in the distance. Look at those nice rock formations. I guess this is somewhat similar to the Appalachians. Doesn't get too tall, but uh, forms these vast valleys. Yeah, just dumping, dumping pollen. Good thing I'm not allergic to it. That ferrosphera again. It's a male. And then, creeping along the rocks is their one to do. We got another podocarp. Okay, a trailing podocarp known as the strawberry pine. But again, no relation to pines. Microcacris tetragona. You see that? Just forming a little prostrate. Forming a little creeping prostrate bastard right here along the rocks. All right? In the alpine zone. All right, they call it the strawberry pine because the megastroboli look like little strawberries, the bright red, probably bird dispersed, edible too. But uh, I don't see any of those here. I just see the uh, microstroboli. Just see those male pollen cones. Little scales though. Look at it. 
It's a creeper. Remnantsofgondwana.com. Look at that. God damn. Get your little alpine garden. Get your little Tas Tasmanian alpine garden all set up. Huh? How far back does this lineage go? Almost looks like uh, after Texas Cooper Soides foliage. You know, there's the decusid scale thing. You know that thing. You know what they do. Oh, look at that. It's a little daisy. Little alpine daisy growing in the muck. Right next to the ferrous spirit. Ferris Fair hookery on Get your orites over there. Astelia, of course. Tons of other apacrids. Little glacial pools. Hopefully not any goddamn alpine cobras. No more fucking tiger snakes. A little tired of that. God, the habitat here is something else. Look at these. Look at look at how red the microstroboli are on a Ferris Fair. See, down below they they've gone off already, but here they're looking good. God damn. Look at it. It's a whole ground cover of microcacris. Tetragona. The strawberry pine. Yeah, just everywhere. Just what a nice goddamn. And then there's Ferris Fera. And see, there's the two next to each other. All right, they just they look so much alike. The scales are a little bit bigger on a microcacris. See that? Ferris Fera on the left, microcacris on the uh, on the right, right there. All right, subtle nuances without reproductive structures. And here we go, Ed, and uh, this will be the fourth podocarp species we've seen today. This is Pod Podocarpus lawrencii with heavily reduced foliage. Look at it. Look how, look how small it is, all right? And I gotta crush it up to smell it. See that it's piney. And again, those aren't leaves, those are uh, needles, the venation. Well, first off, it doesn't have vessels. It's got tracheids like most conifers. And, uh, and then uh, there's the venation. If you, if you, well, you can't tell how the lights and shit, but no cross venation. Okay. A quote-unquote primitive plant. And there's uh, the trunk of one. Just krumholz, just tortured right here on these hills. All right, these these undulating uh, tops of the mountains right here. Look at all the goddamn, look at that. Look at that rock over there. Holy shit. Diabase, you think? Maybe, maybe it's sandstone? Probably diabase. Yeah, you know, there's those. There's the trunk. Like you could form. Look, it's like a little, uh, little hobbit hole, a little elf, uh, elf canopy beneath that. Well, who's this? A phallioid bastard or what? Look at it. I love leaf rosettes. Look at those imbricate leaves. Look at that. With white ab axial surfaces. Is that podocarpus again? God, podocarps are so weird, man. Can be towering trees that rival redwoods or they can be these little little matted bastards growing in the alpine zone look at this anthrotaxis look at it tops out at like eight feet things probably at least 600 years old i i imagine you can't grow that fast up here in the alpine zone given how cold it is remember gondwana okay remember gondwana look at that something about decussate scales just turns me out does don't can't you say the same Anybody ever said that? You ever put that in your Tinder, your damn grinder profile, whatever? Who the fuck does online dating still? It's depressing, isn't it? I don't, I mean, I'm not shaming anybody. Don't feel bad. I'm just saying, you know, it's uh, a lot of posers out there. Eh? It's kind of the problem with social media. You get to pretend, you know, you hide the fact that, you, you know, you hide all your flaws and still never deal with them. All right. Just drown yourself. In. But anyway, what am I talking about? Anyway, after our taxes, Cooper Soides, look at that multi-branched multi-trunked okay just uh you get the all the tannins and that bark all right which again prevents it from rotting you get dead trees that last for a while too look at that beautiful color on it god damn antarctica man antarctica 10 million years ago 20 million years ago but there was still after taxes there there was not the fagus there we gotta get down. It's it's fucking chilly. I think we're gonna have to get out of here soon. The sun's about to set on our ass. Damn convergence among conifers. So this is Ferros Ferra. This might be the Selma Archeri, which is Cooper Sacy, an entirely different family. God damn it. Look at the bark in there. Look at that bark. Oh, that's nice. Looking like a juniper, all right? They both look like a juniper. I can't find any strobe eye on this. Micro or mega. Eh, you filthy fuck. It just, you know, looks looks different in habit, but they can fool you sometimes. Anyway, then we of course we of course got Atherotaxis cupersoides back there. 
The other two species out there with taxes aren't up here because Selaginoides doesn't get this high. It's probably not as cold tolerant. Right? A bigger, more robust tree, but at lower elevations. There we go. There's some night. Okay, get a money shot. There's the mega strobili right there. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Look at that. There we go. There's a nice money shot of the mega strobili right there. All right. Really simple. Just comes out the end of the foliage. Okay, the the, uh, the little decussate bracts, the little de decussate scale leaves start acting like protective bracts, enclosing uh, that uh, seed. And uh, there you go. Beautiful. Yeah, the Selma archeri. Look at that. Just like a just like a fancy southern hemisphere juniper. Cooper C redwood family. Oh, that's nice. God damn. So it looks like a juniper too. What are you doing over here? It doesn't get too tall. It gets like, you know, I don't know, five feet max. Look at it. So there's not even a cone. It really is just a naked seed. A gymnosperm. God damn. How old does this lineage go back? Jurassic or what? Look at it. Decussate scales. Look at that, that red thing. That's the seed. A single seed. Is that just a single seed in there? Looks like it. The Selma archeri, monotypic genus, only only species in the genus. Were there more? Were there some in Antarctica that are extinct now? Maybe back in the day. See, look at that. It's got the pendant, the little the pendant foliage. Nice. Look at that. See how it's kind of drooping. And then look at that that red bark. Cupressaceae, man, the redwood family. God damn. Topping out at six feet. See, they get the snow things up here, you know, prevent the snow bank. You, they come up here and ski. I think skiing is kind of lame, personally, but, you know, to each their own. Okay, look at this species of Ritchie again. Forming, they're just forming a big clump, all right? And how does it protect itself against these steeply dropping temperatures? I mean, it's summer and it's still freezing as hell up here. It's certainly going to drop below freezing tonight. I can't really feel my hands anymore. Look at these bracts, okay? And then, of course, you got that operculum that protects all the sexy parts that has to be pulled off uh, by a lizard or a bird. Of course, getting at the nectar inside, and then insects come by and will hit it. But I also got these bracts too. But uh, you know, I don't know. Just, just notable. You know, looking at it now and keeping in mind how fucking cold it's getting, and you look at the tops too. You still got those bracts, protective bracts, and maybe protecting from frost a little bit. But you think if they were protecting from frost, they'd be hairy. But uh, whatever, whatever works for you. That's where we gotta go. Down there, we're parked way down there. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Alpinized eucalyptus. Saw snow on the ground in one of these uh, crevasses down there. Hopefully you got some on that. Look at these damn, look at these beautiful money shot of those fruits, those eucalyptus fruits. Little woody, little beautiful woody capsules maturing with the red pigments in there. Leaves uh, probably smaller than usual. It's, it's cold, man. It's like 38 degrees. Maybe it's 40. I don't know. It's pretty chilly. Whole bunch of Proteaceae, Ericaceae. Got your damn Astraceae, your Azothamnus, Oleria pinifolia as well. Anyway, hopefully you got some out of that. That's all I got for you this evening. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. What are you doing? You asking for a handout like everybody else?